Welcome to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Tuesday early evening. I know you didn't probably expect to see another one of me or another one of the, the videos of me talking, but uh, quite a bit has come out today, really, chances-wise. So if, uh, if you have missed any of the videos that I released today, the first one was around strikers. You know, uh, we talked about Ivan Tony, Santiago Jimenez, Victor Jorquez. Uh, we talked about Dominic... Uh, I've said Dominic Slanky, sorry. Um... Luis Appenda, Sahu Garassi. So plenty in that video. Go back and have a little watch if you have missed any of that. But also the second video surrounding midfielders and four midfielders with a bit of an update on Conor Gallagher's contract talks with uh, Chelsea. So that's a really good video. If you've missed that one as well, go back and have a watch. All in all, it's about 20 minutes of your time and it's 20 minutes well spent, I promise. In this video, though, we are talking about a couple of players leaving. One permanently, one on loan. Well, maybe permanently, depending on the situation and interest in v Vitor Roque, the uh, young Brazilian striker that we've talked about on this channel. So plenty to talk about, plenty to get into. Just want to say, though, if you're new, give us a subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. And uh, let me just start with the one that's quite uh, it's quite recent. It only came out when I'm recording this, sorry. It came out half an hour ago. And it came from Brizzo Romano, said that Emerson Real could leave Tottenham in the summer transfer window. AC Milan will sign a new right back in the summer and Emerson is high on their list for this window. Emerson, one of many players, are expected to leave Spurs in the summer. I don't think that's groundbreaking. We know of uh, AC Milan's interest in Emerson Real. This is a definitive showing of interest. Um, look, we we spent a lot of money on uh, on Emerson Rao. There was talks we want thirty million euros. I don't think we would get that regardless. But I think you know somewhere in the twenty million pound mark. I think you would expect to get. I and mean, we were offered twenty one million by Al Nassar in January. So I expect something uh, something similar. And I think Spurs would take something similar. I don't think Spurs are going to sit there and go if we don't get twenty five million, we're not selling him. I think Spurs would sell him. I think Spurs would look at Emerson Rao and go, look, he's a nice guy. He's got a good attitude, but. Being a nice guy and good attitude is not going to take Spurs to where we want to go. Um, he's an obvious place of upgrade in, at, at right back. You know, we've got Porro, but behind Porro, we don't. We have Emerson, and that, that's 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 a weak position. That's a weak bit of depth, and we should be looking to move him on. You know, it's good money there in twenty about twenty twenty odd million. You know, obviously on probably on some decent wages. You save that, you go to the next right back, and it's an upgrade. You know, I know we've talked about Kyle Walker Peters, but you know there might be other. I'd assume there is others on that right back list of interest. At the same time, I know a lot of you are quite you know keen of saying, oh, there's this guy, there's that guy, and that guy. Spurs at some point this summer have to buy homegrown players. It is a position of weakness in terms of the quota, um, so we will need to, and that's why Kyle Walker Peters is linked to Spurs. It's my only real reason. Is he an upgrade on Emerson Real? Yeah, I'd say so. Is he a big enough upgrade? Probably not. Probably not. And I think we could do better. Who that would be? We'll have to wait and see. And my partner didn't know it. Uh, moving on to, well, the second guy that could go out on loan, but permanently, it's uh, Will Lankshire, the really exciting youngster for Spurs. So it came from the Football League World, said that Middlesbrough and a number of championship clubs are keen on signing the Tottenham striker Will Langshaw on loan for next season. There is also interest from some top flight European sides over a permanent transfer. I don't think Spurs are going to sell him whatsoever, unless they get offered something ridiculous. Um, no, Spurs won't be selling Will Langshaw. Now, let's sort of decipher the, the loan side of things. A loan to Middlesbrough, no issues with that. I will just actually bring up the championship table uh, just to know where Middlesbrough finished in the end because I don't actually know. Um, they finished eighth and they were four points out of uh, the promotion spot. I mean, they're a team that scored 71 goals this year, which is uh, towards the top end of top goal scorers in the league. You know, you've got... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, I think five teams that scored more than this season. So, you know, a top six club in terms of goal scoring. Will would, would probably do quite well there, I won't lie. Um, just looking at some of the players they've got in terms of attackers-wise. I mean, they got some good players there. Um, Luke Thomas, Hayden Hackney. Uh, who else we got in here? Got a long old list, good lords. Uh, Lewis O'Brien's playing there. Oh, okay. Didn't know a few of those ones. Uh, Luke Ayling's there, the former right back from Leeds. 
uh, Johnny Housen, Paddy McNair, Paddy McNair, yeah, yeah. Um, look, at the end of the day, he would get game time at Middlesbrough, I believe. There are the championship clubs. I would be sitting there with a position of power saying, look, you can all want Will Langshire, but to get him, we need to see that you're going to guarantee him game time. We don't want a situation where we have with um, uh, Dane Scarlett out on loan. Not interested in that. Not interested in that because he played nearly as many minutes for Ipswich as I did. So we want a situation where we're sending a guy out on loan who's going to get, I mean, look, 46 games a season in the championship. Let's say they get another two, another four games out of the cup competitions of the League Cup or the EFL Cup, sorry, and the FA Cup, 50 games. You'd be sitting there going, look, we know he's not going to play every game. He's going to be injured for some, but he needs to play over half of those games at least for good quality development. And I'm all for it. I... Will he? Would he get regular game time at Spurs? No, because I think he at the moment would be behind Scarlett and Valise. So I have no issues with with a loan spell if it goes well. Interesting to the first team because I think other players that we've had out on loan in the championship maybe haven't done as well. You know, when we look at Dane Scarlett at Ipswich, obviously wasn't the most fruitful of loan spells. When you think of uh, Troy Parrott, again, not as great. So I'm all for this loan spell. Not an issue for me. Um, and yeah, and just want to finish off with the Vito Roque news. So yeah, it came out that Barcelona have supposedly decided to sell Vito Roque permanently rather than allow him to leave on an initial loan. The Spanish club are keen to raise funds and have formed Spurs. They want 45 million euros for a sale. Now, bear with me because I took a screenshot of Xavi's quotes earlier. Uh, and he said on Vita Roque, he said, I'm not replying to player agents. I can't do that. Vita's future will be discussed internally to make a final decision. He doesn't play more due to the question of competition for a team like Barcelona. Here you compete with very big players, which people in the comment section were going wild with that one. It was like big players, like Ferran Torres. Okay. I was like, Ooh, that's all good. Um, the agent thing I, I think we need to obviously take into account because we signed Radu Dragujin in, in January and I have heard his agent talk more than Dragujin's even played. So that is something to keep an eye on that his agent, he's doing his job. He's, he's keeping his own client's name in the media when he's not playing. So in case he wants to move, the interest is going to be there. He's not going to move Dragujin, don't worry. I'm just saying it as, how is it, how, uh, as it is, sorry. But on... Vita Roque, look, we don't need to keep bringing in guys who have clearly have got agents who have got a bigger mouth than they should have. It's not for me. I wouldn't want that. You know, when we talked about some of the strikers earlier, we talked about some really exciting strikers. Um, and to be honest, I'd rather one of those bigger name strikers. I mean, 45 million euros, about 40 million pounds. If you put a bit more down, you get a top five league, a top four league, as I like to call it, you know, Bundesliga, Serie A, Premier League, and La Liga, you'll get a top four league proven striker for in Serha Grasu, cheaper. Uh, you know, uh, Ivan Tony, something not too far off that. You know, a pender, just a bit more. And that's the way I'm going to look at it. I think Vitor Roque is a really, exciting play, a really exciting player, but his agent gives me pause for concern. And I'd rather get someone who's ready to rock and roll who is more proven because that's a position of weakness as a striker and I want proven players playing there. I don't know what you guys think. I'll be keen to know, but that's just my general thought and feeling. But anyway, that's the end of this video. Hope you did enjoy it. Drop a like on the video if you did. If you, um, in the comment section below, let me know your thoughts and feelings about Vito Roque. Let me know your thoughts and feelings about Will Lankshire going out on loan. And as well as that, your thoughts and feelings about Emerson Real leaving potentially to AC Milan or just leaving in general. Obviously, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bonification for more. But anyway, guys, end of the video. I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.